All right, so now that we've looked at all of the different options in setting up our protocol, let's go ahead and take a look at what it would look like from the training screen. So basically, a couple things to keep in mind for this particular exercise is that under session control, I did turn it on simulation because we do not have anything on, you know, electrodes on anybody's head, anything like that. So we wanted to go ahead and make sure that we could <coughs> run the session without having to hook somebody up. So I go ahead and hit OK. And then at the end of making all of these changes, we also always want to make sure we use the Use These Settings button. This basically saves the settings that we did. OK. And then you see we're back at Setup Home Screen. See our trainee ID is the, the folder that we built. Also gives us the comment. And what we're going to now do is I'm going to simply hit Run the Next Session. So I hit run the next session. The next window that comes up is training control screen. Again, Brain Master 3.4. Now let's look at a couple different things that we see from this screen. I'm going to go ahead and just bump this up. Run the next session. And then we're at the training screen, training control screen. Now on the training control, control screen, we see that we have a menu bar along the top. Let's take a quick look at that and see, you know, what are some of the options we have available to us there. As I start at data, I'll notice some things that were similar to what we saw in data channels. I can choose a COM port number from 1 to 8. Okay. I see playback file. We remember seeing that from session control. I say save EEG data. This is an example of where during a session you can just go right up to data, click save EEG, and it become, begins recording the raw EEG. Okay. We notice our 60 hertz and 50 hertz notch filters. These are the software notch filters. Again, I have them defaulted off right now, and that's going to show us a good example of why we want to do that when we start the session. We have show login data. This happens has to do with which unit are we currently logged in as? What serial number? Okay. So I go ahead and I hit OK. Now, also under data, we see Atlantis setup. Before we had mentioned an option for a what I call field firmware upgrade, that's where this would happen. And this is where we see important notice. Do not use this control unless instructed by BrainMaster Technologies. Okay, we're not going to do anything right now. I don't have a unit hooked up. But if you call in to get the full Atlantis mode and to get that, that field upgrade, this is where it happens. And we walk you through it on the phone. The reason we do that is if you click some buttons through the sequence or out of sequence when we're doing this firmware upgrade, you can actually disable your device and it has to come back to BrainMaster to be fixed. You never go into this unless we're talking to you guys. That is correct. Okay. Closing it's okay, right? Close to hit the close if button that, is fine. If, if that is done, you no, have the software working with that, that modification now? Right? Yes. So Full Atlantis mode is is available. It's twenty four bit data coming up. It's all the, that's when you have to use full Atlantis mode to see the digital impedances on the screen. So you can see the numbers instead of just relying on the lights. I've done that with one of my amps, mm -hmm. um, but I was told that it wouldn't work with some of the software that worked out with it. It should work with everything as far as I know. Unless you're talking about like some third party <laughs> software or something. No, that, yeah. yeah, our own 3.4 stuff it, it works with. Yep. I clicked on uh, login data and it says one sampling rate is 120. But I already had changed it. Uh, 256. Is this also a separate software thing? No, it should. That says 256. Yeah, it should say 256 unless you click the button and then click it back. Go to viewer change settings and see what you got selected. So Bill, uh, what's viewer change settings. What is the, why do we need to uh, do this Atlantic 
Atlantis setup. That's only if you want to use the full Atlantis mode for the real low frequency training oh. or slow cortical potential or something like that. Okay. Moving to the me next menu option is display. This is sim similar to display options. This is where we, oops, where we can click on some different panels to appear when the session starts. Okay. Frequency bands. Which bands will I see in those different panels? Same thing. We saw this before in display options. Color. I want to see my waves in color, my filtered waves in color or in white. Again, along the top. And then sound. This is very similar to the feedback control screen we were just working with before break. Reward sounds, component sounds, MIDI tones. And then somebody mentioned before, well, how can we hear them during the session if we want to try different sounds? MIDI voice. Click that, I get my 128 different sounds. Okay, so then I can click them during a session. Again, I'm at the training screen. I'm on the top menu. Okay, also we see our amplitude and pitch, our sustained and percussive, all those options that we were discussing, all available to you from the training screen. Now here with reward sounds, we now notice we see bell, click, cymbal, ding, hammer, morse, space, nice click. Those are again your dot .wav files. We didn't see those before. They're only here and this is where we can select that dot .wav file when all criteria is met for reward sounds. That's what this is for. Okay, everybody with me? All right, so let's go ahead and start a session here and let's discuss the notch filters a little bit. So as I hit go, first it's gonna tell me ready to start place electrodes. It's going to again give me those labels that I pre-selected before. Turn on the module, hit OK to start now. So I hit OK. It now tells me this is a simulation. To start the session, press OK when the EEG signal is good. This is a good time that if you have somebody hooked up, look at your signal. If it's too noisy, maybe work on the connections a little bit. Make sure your Atlantis isn't too close to the PC. Make sure their feet are not you know, near or touching an electrical cord or power strip or anything like that. This is, the session has not yet started. Feedback hasn't begun. The clock hasn't started to count. It's in this idle mode. Okay, go ahead. For those who use the temporary sort of passkey associated with serial number one, zero, 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 one. Yeah, I mean, it should work. It's saying that that has expired. Oh, okay. They must have had a date on it. Okay. So you just watch this for now, and then at break, I can fix that. OK. So how do you run the simulation? You, you have to make sure it's selected on simulation under session control. OK.